Hi, in this jet search tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set a listing template for your live search results area. So let me show you exactly what we're going to be pulling off in this tutorial. So if I go ahead and just type in something, you can see right here, usually by default, it's one long column and you don't really have any way to control how this looks. So that's why we can use the listing system inside of jet engine and you can do stuff like two columns and then the user is going to be able to tab over and get two more results right here. So now I'm going to jump into the back end of the website and show you how I have everything set up and how to build this out. In order to follow this tutorial, you will need the following plugins installed. You're going to need at least the free version of Elementor. You're not going to need Elementor Pro unless you need some of those additional uh, options. And of course, we need Jet Engine and Jet Search. And you also need to make sure that you already have some post or a custom post type set up with some examples. So let me show you underneath my custom post types inside of jet engine i was able to set up one called locations and i just have these simple ones right here so you're going to want to make sure you have something set up before you start to follow this part of the tutorial so what i'm going to be pulling in later is the title this is the content and then right down here i just have a meta field just called square foot just so i can show you that you can pull in some meta information inside of that uh, jet search results so now that you already have some post enabled, now let's jump into the page and actually get started on building this out. Okay, so here I am on that demo page and as you can see, I just have a few containers. I have the main container, which is gonna have just like a title, a little description, and the search box is gonna go underneath here. So the search box you're gonna wanna make sure you search for is called Ajax Search. So just click and drag that widget in to wherever you want it. And then you just need to change out a few things right here and then we can start to set up the listing template. So the first thing is you can go underneath here and style up anything you need for the uh, search form, but let's go ahead and actually underneath search query. You're going to want to make sure that you choose your custom post type, or if you're just using a blog post, you can choose that. So you're going to want to make sure that it's, you know, choosing the one that you want to have it searched. And then down here, you're going to also want to change out any options. I wanted to limit it where there's only four instead of like five. That way it's a little bit cleaner and then you can see how many post numbers you need, that type of information. So once you have that, you can go ahead and just hit publish and let's see how this looks before we do anything else. So if you start to do a search, this is how it's always going to look. By default, it has like the image on the left and then it like spans across right here. So I wanted to have it where it was two columns and it had some meta information in here as well. So now we're going to jump into the main part of the tutorial and that is adding a listing template right here. So what I recommend is just keeping this page open and jump over into Jet Engine and underneath listing slash components, go ahead and just click add new item. And in this case, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we just keep it as post. The post type in this example is called locations. So now you just go ahead and give it a name, something like demo locations, something like that. And then I'm gonna be using Elementor. So just go ahead and click this create listing item so now this is where we're gonna go ahead and actually start to, to lay out how it's gonna look. So I'm just gonna click the plus button right here and I'm gonna do a flex box and then let's just do something like this. So it's kind of like split. And in this example, we can do like 30%. You see right here it says 30% on that container. So I just select that first container and then I'm gonna select the second container and just make that 70. So now we're at 30 and 70 equal you know 100%. And now I'm going to go into Jet Engine. And I'm going to start to pull in some uh, dynamic information. So in this first one, I'm just going to type in the word dynamic and you can just click and drag dynamic image. So each one of those posts is using a featured image. And so that's what it's just going to be pulling in the post thumbnail. And then if I want to go ahead and just give it a width of, let's say, 100 percent and let's make it where it's always going to be like 200 pixels, something like that. So if you, of course, do something like uh, 200 pixels, it's gonna squish it. So what you're gonna wanna do underneath object fit is just do something like cover. So once you do that, you should see it should go back into the correct aspect ratio. So now if I go ahead and pull in a dynamic field on the right side, I can just pull in the title. So you can just see, and this one is just called like France. And of course you can style this up any way you want. So let's just keep it really simple. Underneath HTML tag, I'm just gonna choose something like H2. And now let's pull in the post content. So I'm gonna type in dynamic and underneath dynamic, dynamic field, I'm gonna pull that in. And then underneath, uh, you can just keep this first one at post slash term user object. 
and then I'm gonna pull in excerpt. So even if you don't have an excerpt, I like using this one instead of content. Uh, the reason for that is if you have links inside of your content, it might throw a lot of things kind of out of whack. It's like an elementor limitation. So what I recommend is just select excerpt and then automatically generate excerpt. So what that's going to do is pull in whatever your content is on that post and display it like as an excerpt. And then this is where you can go ahead and give it a custom length. So if you just type in something like 30, it should pull in like 30 different words. So now I'm gonna show you how you can pull in meta information. So if I go back into what I showed you in the beginning, if I go underneath uh, my custom post type, click on one of the posts, I have down here just a really simple meta field called square foot. Just wanted to show you here, you can pull in meta information down here. So this is all just using the meta field inside of Jet Engine. What you do is you just go in and you start to pull in a dynamic field, just like up we've been doing. And then underneath you wanna choose the source as metadata and then what I like about this is very clean. So whatever you named it, uh, it's very easy to find. So underneath the locations, I just have one called square feet. So in this situation, it's just going to be like 760. So if you scroll down where it says customize field output, you can input something like square feet. So SQFT, something like that. And you can see it's going to pull that in. Okay, so now we're going to do two other things and then we can save this out and then apply it to that uh, search results area. So the next two things is gonna be optional depending on if you wanna have this type of functionality. So the very first one is you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's clickable. So what I'm gonna do is just make the whole thing clickable so the user can just hover over and just click and it goes into the post. So one cool way to do it inside of Elementor is you can see right here, I have everything under one main container and then I have the 30, 70 split. So the left container is 30% and the right one is 70. So what you could do is select the main container and underneath layout, go underneath additional options, underneath the HTML tag, go to a link, and then just click this button right here where it says dynamic tags. So you will need Elementor Pro if you wanna have this type of functionality, but you can just go ahead and do uh, post URL. So something like that, and now that whole thing is gonna be clickable if the user you know, just selects any part of this listing. And then the other option is if you wanna have it where the user knows they're hovering over a certain container, you can just change the, like the background color. So that's really simple to do. Just choose the main container underneath style, go underneath hover. And then let's say I want to have it where it goes, you know, you don't want full black like that. You can just choose black. And then the slider right down here is like your opacity. So if you want to do like a really light gray, you can go ahead and do something like that. And now when the user hovers over that, you know, it shows that it's going to choose a different color. And that's it. So once you have that all styled up, you can always go into mobile, you know, make it a little bit different, however you want to do it on mobile. But to keep this tutorial short, let's just stick to desktop and hit publish. And now you can go back into your main uh, page where you're going to have the search results. Just hit refresh. And now when you start to search for that listing, it's going to show up inside of here. So if I go back into my Ajax search underneath results area, you can now type in the one we just created. I believe I called that uh, demo locations. So you just go ahead and click that. And then underneath here, you're going to want to make sure you have two columns. So let's go ahead, hit publish, and let's test this on the front end to make sure everything's working correctly. So now if I just type in something really quick, you can see right here, it looks like everything has been pulled in. So you can see that color, that hover is right here. And then when you click on one of these, it's going to go into that post. So this post, I haven't really styled up this page, but it has like the title, the featured image, and like the content. So after you have that, you can go ahead, of course, and then style up anything else that might've been missing. And what I like is you can go ahead inside of Elementor and start to visually see some things you might need to style up. So like this button, for example, um, you can go underneath style on the Ajax and underneath where it says all results button, you can go ahead and change like the background color, something that's on brand, maybe like some padding change that to white. So, you know, something like that, you can go ahead and style it up. You don't have to actually go to the front end when you're using jet search, you can just use the back end and it should show up right here. And of course, if you ever need to make any updates to this template, you can just jump back over into that tab, make any edits and hit publish. So that's why I like to do everything in different tabs because if you need to make any edits, you can just, you know, switch between tabs, hit update and it should show up right here. And that's it for this tutorial on how to set up a custom listing template for your live search results area inside Jet Search. Thank you for watching.